I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this episode is being recorded and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Welcome to Can I Get a Refill, the podcast that offers a nurturing and inspirational space for honest and open discussions around career aspirations, wealth creation, motherhood, healthy relationships with others and the self, as well as an emphasis on physical, mental, and spiritual well being. Join us for light hearted, authentic chats with like minded women, as well as more in depth discussions with industry professionals to support your ambitions and heal old wounds, as we empower you to regularly fill up your own cup. I'm your host, Steph Bruno Newton, singer, writer, recovering people pleaser, first time podcast host, and first time mum. Thank you for pressing play today, and now let's get into the episode. Hi, my friends. Just jumping in here to let you know that we experienced some slight technical issues during recording. The sound is not as crisp and clear as previous episodes, but rest assured, it's still easy to listen to. And make sure you do, as the episode is full of so much helpful content. Okay, let's jump in. Hello and welcome back to the Can I Get a Refill podcast. We're rejoined today by the virtual nutritionist Latoya Cruz, whom we had on two episodes ago talking about postpartum recovery, and we're talking all things today, managing burnout. So fellas, you're welcome back to this episode. Latoya, thanks so much for joining us again today. Thank you for having me again. How are you? How's your week been? Yeah, it's been good. Can't complain. Long weekend, so it's been nice. Oh, that's too. And how yeah. are you two beautiful girls? Both very good. That's good. Yeah. And how are you? Good. I'm good. I'm starting to feel a little bit burnt out. So this is like, oh, the, perfect I timing. really am feeling so tired. I was just saying because I had this naive thing in my head where maternity leave would, you know, be laying on picnic rugs, doing arts and crafts. And <laughs> I have something in my diary every single day. And I didn't join that government appointed mother's group. I was saying I, was, I made friends with the girls in the parenting class. So I'm like, I already have mum friends. I could not fit it in. I think the first class would have been today. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm starting to feel, yeah, just a little bit. I'm always talking about boundaries. And I think I haven't um, upheld them enough lately because everyone wants to meet Leo. So I'm. It's hard. Yeah, I'm just going to have to pick a day where I just do nothing. I yep. can feel it coming. So I'm good. I've had good energy, but just today I'm feeling a little bit depleted. So, you so can... um, good timing then. <laughs> good timing. Before we get into that. I didn't ask you when you walked in because, Latoya, i got to ask you this. You and I have very similar tastes in TV shows. On your newsletter, you just said that <laughs> you were into the Nicole Kidman show. What's it called? Perfect the Couple? The Perfect Couple. Great. Yes. Loved it. Binged it. We both like And Just Like That. We both like yeah. uh, Emily in Paris. Have you watched Nobody Wants This on Netflix? Yes. I am midway through. Oh. I haven't finished. I'm midway through. Since the weekend. Yes. Yeah. Oh, same. I, since the weekend. I have binged it three times. <gasps> Wow. In a row, oh. Alan walks past and he's like, oh, are you watching that again? <laughs> and every time he comes home, I'm like, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I knew rabbis kissed like that. <laughs> I would have hunted down a rabbi a long time ago. Do you know, Alan and I have been together nine years. I have had two requests for nine years. Neither one have been delivered. Grab my face and pash me. like <laughs> You know, like the face grab? Like yeah. the really Hollywood kiss face grab. And I want to be like pashed in the rain. <laughs> Like pouring rain, not a one. Not once. In no not ways. I'm watching the episode with him. I'm like, it's a good kiss. See, see that? <laughs> Face grab. <It's> go- <laughs> What's going on? Have a word with him on your way out if he yeah, comes yeah, in. I'll like, it's, this, this has just gone on too long now. Now that Leo's here, it's probably even less chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How good is it? And they're bloody podcasters. I didn't even know yeah. that when I first play. I know, I know. Are you loving it? I am. Which? What's the last episode you saw? Um... They, her parents come over to watch oh, Vanna Trump or whatever it is. And yes, yeah. yeah. So fun. Isn't the sister awesome? Yeah. It's I funny, like sister. funny dynamic because it's very, very typical sisters. I love it. Yeah. You know why I love it? Because like I love Emily in Paris, but I go, this is so authentic. Like this is how you talk to people. Yeah. Like I love it. I love yeah. a lot of F-bombs. I love like the way they pay their friends out. Like, I yeah. love that. Anyway, I'm obsessed. I can't stop watching it. <laughs> and I might be a New York girl, but I'm like, I'm going to live in LA. I'm going to live in Beverly Hills. Yeah, and Alan's like, aren't they? Alan's like, I love their houses. <laughs> Everyone's got the most beautiful house. So anyway, if you haven't seen it, dear Lord, press play. It's so good. All right, let's talk actual helpful things. 
Okay, so I want to start by asking you, why do you think so many of us are burnt out these days? And why do you think it's like, I think it seems to affect more women. So talk us through that. You are absolutely right in saying that. Research actually backs that as well. Mm. So women are 1.5 times more likely to become burnt out than men. Yeah, not surprising. Yeah. And um, so something that I deal with in clinic and something that I've sort of created is something called the modern day woman. Great. Cause you work mainly with mums and that's right. everyone check the show notes. Cause I've linked the Toya's website and Instagram so you can find oh, out more. Thank you. But um, yeah, so something called the modern day woman. And yeah. I believe this is prime example why women are so burnt out. Mm. It's because we work full time. Yeah. We're climbing corporate ladders. We've got ambitions and dreams and all the rest of it, but we're still also playing the traditional role mm. of the mother where, you know, we're carrying the mental load for the entire family. We're, 100% the sole carer, or I shouldn't say sole carer, primary the carer. Primary, yep. Um, of We're everything kids. to everyone. That's right. And you can That's be right. everything, but you can't be everything all at once. Absolutely. Mm. And another quote that I've seen as well is like, we're – Raising kids as if we don't work, but then we're working as if we're not raising kids. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. it's Say that one again. So we're working as though we don't raise kids and we're trying to raise kids as though we don't work. Yes. Oh, so it's like so you're, we are 100% overcommitted. <sighs> and, you know, every time I see a new mom or, you know, a new client in clinic, I go through what their day looks like or what their week looks yeah. like. And it's – Some of these mums are up at like four o'clock in the morning taking their kids swimming training before they're then heading off to work and doing a full day of work. I actually said to Alan not long ago, the one sport Leah's not allowed to do swimming because I said, I shan't be at a pool for squads at 5 a.m. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like swimmers, why don't you sleep? Oh my God. You can swim with the sun up. Did anyone tell them you can swim with the sun up? I don't know why they think they have to do it in the dark and the cold. I I don't know what that is. I know, I know. But so it's like... Yeah, it's just – it's the overcommitment. So that's yep. that's one aspect of it. The other as- – it, it seems like – remember that thought, come back to it, the, the other aspect, but it seems like life was just simplified years ago. Definitely. And I recently had Nina Thornberger on and we were talking about cyclical living and we were both agreed that feminism and, you know, female empowerment movement is fantastic, absolutely necessary – and it's brought a lot of great things, but with it, it's sort of done us a little disservice and we've shot ourselves in the foot because we're trying to be everything and we're trying to be, you know, our mums, not all of our mums in the 80s and 90s were career women. My mum yeah. didn't work um, until I was seven or eight to pay, pay for dance fees. So, she, yeah. you know, we would lay on the trampoline eating watermelon in summer. Every woman I know has a side hustle yeah. or, a, or a creative outlet. I'm in the middle of one right now, you know, and yeah. they've got kids. The kids have extracurricular activities. You're seeing all your family. You're seeing all your friends. You're trying to be everything to everyone. And I cannot find enough time in the day. And you're also doing, you know, you're also at the gym and doing your yoga. That's and right. Make sure you do your deep breathing and you yeah. go for a walk and like, how do you, you know, your self care and cook yeah. healthy and do this and yeah. do that. But yeah, so there's there's that one load of it where like mm. the mental load is huge. We're managing careers, we're managing family life and, and that side of things. Mm. The other thing is we don't switch off anymore. No. Like technology is oh, great. Oh, online all the time. That's right. Technology yeah. is on great until it's not. So it's like, it's, it's made mm. us available 24 seven. I just to saw our bosses, to our friends. PT at the gym yesterday and she's come back from one month in Spain with her wife and she just looks great. Like she's just glowing. All the photos are good. She's like, you know, it's not even the beautiful surroundings. It's like that no one could reach me for like, yeah. you know, cause she goes, if you go to Noosa, you still got to call your parents and check in on your sister. And you know, she's like, no one reaches you for four weeks and you use it as a great excuse unless you get roaming on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> but you're switched off and you are never ever able to switch off you we you know when I grew up you had one house phone and if you if you wanted to yeah. start, take it off the hook you know That's so right. you're just reachable and on call 24/7. That's right. and then you know when we get home from work or whatever it is to switch off or to wind down we doom scroll oh yeah and then you're doom <laughs> yeah. scrolling and you're presented with so much information and it's like it's information overload and you know some of the content that's available to us, it's stuff like, you know, parenting tips where you're basically feeling shamed and guilted about oh, parenting yeah. properly. And then it's like, you know, I shouldn't really talk, but it's diet tips and nutrition yeah, tips. And yeah. it's like all this information and stuff that you should be doing. You, you know what you hear in your head? Be better. Be better. That's like right. I'm not, yeah. not enough, not doing enough. So I've actually tried to catch myself and don't put my phone next to me when I feed Leo now. And I try and like, it's, it could be a 15, 20 minute feed because he's bottle fed and he drinks it really quick. Yeah. And then he lays on my chest for half an hour. So for a half an hour to 45 minutes, I either try to play music or just sit in the moment, make eye contact with him. He, now he laughs and giggles and I feel better because when I'm scrolling, 
I'm not yeah. rested. I'm, it's just You're activating not, no. my mind. Yeah. Like I've tried to implement boundaries with my phone too. So iPhone it's users, hard. you can have this thing called downtime. We're basically. Oh, I've heard about that. Mm. Yeah, so it's basically between, you know, set hours every day, downtime automatically switches on and I have no access to any other apps. Like Mm. people can call and message if needed, but during that downtime I try not to attend to calls and messages. Yeah, I saw a documentary on Netflix ages ago about social media and they were all saying how they they all invented all these different social medias and they're like, we do not let our kids have it. We do not let them, you know, or they have this time at night where they put everyone's phone in a box and they put a lock on it. But I, from that show, turned off notifications for everything except net bank, text and call. So anything's an emergency, you can get me text and call. But WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, I get no notifications. I have to actively go in yeah. to see things and that improved my life drastically because you'd be working, see one notification, oh, someone liked your story, you pick up your phone, you're on it for 10 minutes. That's right. You open, you, you know where it's that muscle memory where I go from Instagram to Facebook to Messenger to Twitter to yeah. WhatsApp and I'm like, I was just going to Google the weather <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. pick my outfit for the day. Yeah. And yeah. it's so easy done. And so even, you know, when I go to bed of an evening, do not disturb switches on mm. where I've got certain people who can bypass that in case of an emergency. So like, you know, my husband and family members. I don't know how to do that before you leave. Can you show me I'll how to show do that you. on my phone? Okay. Um, <laughs> and then it switches back off at a certain time in the morning. But All I, my girlfriends do it because when I text them, it's got that purple writing. That's right. Yeah, Jane, that's right. Episode, and I'm like, I've got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> so and it's great because... With mine, it comes back on at a certain time of the morning, but awesome. it's, it's at a time where I'm already up, I've done, I'm ready to go kind of thing. And so it's like I wake up in the morning and when I look at my screen, I don't have any notifications. So there's no reason for me to unlock my phone, which Good. keeps me off yes. my phone for the morning period. You know what's funny? All those in my life who have that are all young mums. <laughs> so oh, it really? must be the time when they're like, I need yeah. to start instilling this. It's yeah. just because, you know, you become so overstimulated oh and, you know, you've already made so many decisions by mid-morning and mm. it's like all because you've responded to texts mm. and notifications and stuff. It's like yes. you're already experiencing decision fatigue and it's not even noon yet. Yeah. So, yeah, I have become more strict with phones, but it's I do believe it is what's contributing to burnout as well. Yeah. Um, it's a mental burnout. It is. Because I remember someone saying once they were a, a, a surgeon, they said if I can't, because they might operate for 12 hours. If there's no time to have a nap, I do a five to 10 minute meditation because the mental relaxation sometimes refreshes me more than sleep. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said about cleansing your brain. Sometimes I picture windscreen wipers and like wiping my brain of all my <laughs> thoughts so I can just start fresh. But yeah, it makes yeah, sense. The mental fatigue. Yeah. But then the other thing is as well, like women's hormones are different. Mm. So it's like we are wired differently yeah. to men, which I do believe is another reason why women are are a lot more burnt out. It's not to say men aren't, and a lot more men are becoming more modern day fathers in a way where they are also just as hands on at home. Three times more than previous generations, I just read, and I I believe that. Yeah, so they have to because we're working and doing everything. They have to help us out, or the kids might not get fed. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You're right about hormones because when I did that episode on cyclical living, that's what we were talking about, how a woman will, ha- you know, women will have like a 28-day cycle and a men- man will have the 24 hours. So, like, yeah. they don't get that, you know, they can wake up and have energy, you know, th- from the morning and we might not. We might have three days where, yeah. you know, don't approach us for three days. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> what are some warning signs that we may be suffering burnout? When in clinic assessing a client, these are some of the things I start looking for. So my biggest thing when assessing a client for burnout and stress is cortisol dysregulation and so things like going to bed feeling really wired but tired oh yes so it's like tossing and turning you can't sleep you can't switch off most women are like that absolutely Mm. but then you're waking up of a morning and you're feeling really groggy you're not starting the day feeling fresh you're starting off feeling like you're on the back foot already and is that because it's not quality sleep or that's because your cortisol is high it's because of the cortisol dysregulation yeah so there's some kind of cortisol imbalance starting to go on which is contributing to the burnout. But how can they test? Because this is where people get lost. Well, if I go to my GP, they didn't really know how to test it. Do you go to a naturopath? Do you go to a nutritionist? How do you find out if your cortisol is too high? Is there a particular blood test that will show it or is it just warning it, It's signs? particular testing, no. Okay. So there is particular testing. So functional testing can be done through nutritionists and naturopaths. Mm-hmm. But GPs definitely should be able to. It's If your okay. GP can't test for cortisol, then perhaps you need to check. So they can. Okay, that's GP. good yeah. yeah, Yeah, so it's they do do um, different sites different types of testing for it. Yeah, so with me, I tend to look at obviously signs and symptoms first because the body will always start to communicate signs and symptoms before perhaps a blood test will pick up on it or whatever So what are some other signs? So another thing is, so a lot of it is energy related. If you're kind of getting towards mid-morning and already like you're crashing, you're struggling, you're craving coffee constantly, Mm. you feel like... Quick hit. Yeah, Mm. 
you feel like, you know, if one more person asks you for one more thing, you're going to absolutely snap. Like it's just that one more favor that's going to break the camel's back. Mm. So it's like that feeling of overwhelm. It's a lot of stress. It's a that's lot of one anxiety. of the questions on that mental health plan <laughs> thing. That's one of the questions. Like any question disrupts you or something, something yeah. like that. And I'm like, uh, yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if yeah. I'm tired, yeah. But I mean, if you think about it, if your mental load's huge, you're on the mm. brink of burnout. It's like that one simple favor. Mm. It's like that one thing that's just pushed you that a little bit too far. There's a line I hear all the time from women in my life. I just feel pulled in too many different directions. Yeah. And I just, I've always felt that. But yeah. then a lot of the time it's my fault for taking on too many things, which is why I always talk in every episode about boundaries. No one knows your diary better than you. So you just have to say no to some things. Yeah, that's right. Like they don't know. They're not being rude by asking you to do things. They don't know how much you do yeah. today. Yeah. Um, some other things could be loss of appetite, nausea. You can get a lot of gut upset as well so yeah, yeah. you know a lot of people the gut brain relation exactly yeah. they might start experiencing like some kind of like ibs like symptoms mm-hmm. so maybe diarrhea or experiencing a bit of constipation yeah. um hey is loss is it always just loss of appetite because i find sometimes i get like that and sometimes i'll have increased where i'll crave bad not bad things but like a junk thing where it's like sugar or fat and i read once that if you sleep deprived or if you're low energy your body's craving that quick hit that's right yeah, yeah. which definitely is another thing which what's going to come to you is craving. So if you are starting to crave simple foods or like high energy dense foods, like, you know, sugary sort of stuff, takeaways, Mm. all that kind of stuff, things that you wouldn't typically eat. Once you start craving it, it is, it's your body looking for some kind of quick hit of energy. It's like, um, when everyone, when we were in lockdown and everyone's like, oh, I put on so much weight. I was like, really? I actually lost weight because I was rested. Yeah. So I craved less and just ate well and cooked and took my time. And yeah. I lost weight and looked great because I just, for the first time, didn't have an overpacked schedule. Yeah. Mm. And that would have been, I think, the case for a lot of people yeah. too. Yeah. I felt well. I didn't feel the need to have any like high sugar foods. I was just happy with like simple home cooked foods. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but coming back to some of the other signs and symptoms, like your immune system can start to become affected as well. So mm. if you're constantly fatigued or if you're constantly getting sick and run down and you're always feeling like you're on the verge of getting the flu. And I'm always hearing that from so many women in my life. And I'm like, I really think you're burnt out because yeah. con- I said, I think your immunity is taken a hit, yeah. which gut health can t- contribute to immunity and all of that. So definitely. Yeah. So when it comes to burnout, it affects so many different body symptoms. Like yeah. you're looking at your endocrine system, which is, you know, where all of your stress hormones are, even your reproductive system. Yeah. It's things like your respiratory system, your immune system, your gastrointestinal system. It basically it's every all symptom. Of it yeah, like, your body isn't your body protecting itself. I heard once that you might not fall pregnant when you're in a really high stress situation because your body's safeguarding, saying this is not the optimal time to bring in a human. Definitely I'm safeguarding you. So everything sort of shuts down. But I think getting sick when you're burnt out. You know that line that everyone used to share on Instagram: um, "Take time to rest, or your body will force you," or something yeah. like like. Yep. Uh, oh, something like pick um, a time that's good for you to rest. Otherwise, your body will pick yeah, it for you, and yeah. it's usually at a time where you can't afford to yeah, take a rest. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, because you push you push yourself to the brink, and your body needs a rest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. It it affects absolutely everything. And going back to what you're saying, when you are burnt out, your body is in this flight or fight response. Yeah which you're in a high state of stress. So it's like it's going to disrupt your digestive system. If you are trying for a baby, it's yeah. it's going to affect that because exactly as you said it, it's your body's like, no, we're in danger zone. It's not safe to conceive. Well, that's something that everyone started talking about maybe like five years ago, the fight, flight or freeze response that yeah. no one really talked about before. And you're always hearing people talk about saber-toothed tigers because that was something biologically that was in us because centuries ago you needed that cortisol hit in case you needed to outrun a yeah. saber-toothed tiger. We don't have to outrun animals, <laughs> you know, yeah. but our body is deeming the stressful situations as the same threat. Absolutely. So we have the power to control it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you know, not. you could be sitting at your desk and you read an email and it's something of high stress content and mm. You know, you you go into this stress response where mm. it's like adrenaline starts pumping through the I body. I feel it. Don't you feel it? Absolutely, mm. you feel it. And it's like you know, you've got this adrenaline running through your body, and historically, you'd be running away from the threat. Yeah. But it's like now we're just sitting, dealing with the threat, oh. and so it's like it's it's disrupting everything. That's funny you say about sitting. Don't you find that moving your body helps? And I feel that a lot of yeah. people say that with anxiety. Like if I go for a walk, if I'm in the house, it's affecting me. If I go for a walk, it's like you know they say you see ducks when they do that thing when they shake themselves off. It's actually, if they're feeling a bit stressed too, they're just shaking the situation off. So that's something that I find movement. The second you have movement, 
you feel better. Definitely. And, mm. it's, you know, you're getting that endorphin hit as well. Yeah. I find 10 minutes into a good run, I'm like, oh, I feel like a superwoman. You know, like something takes over and the stress does alleviate. Yeah. To a point, sometimes I need a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also believe, and I think that you might agree, is that there's a holistic approach. So you and I both work at a wonderful wellness company called The Beauty Chef and I used to have a lot of people emailing and it was, I said, it's always women over 30. We're all too stressed and they were always like, tell me about this sleep supplement I can take. Or the, and I'm like, these are great, take all that. But I could hear that everything in their life was high stress and I'm like, you can take a supplement but you need a holistic approach. You need to be able to remove stressful, not that I was like giving them counselling sessions, but, you know, like if you've yeah. got stressful relationships, that needs to be looked at. If your schedule is too busy, if you don't meditate, if you don't have time for exercise, the supplement yeah. is a Band-Aid. You still need That's to right. alleviate yeah. the schedule. Can you turn your phone off an hour before bed? Can you have like the red light or something in your bedroom so that yep. you're not seeing bright lights? Because isn't it that if you see bright lights before bed, it's your body, the natural meridians or something, thinking that it's the sun rising and that it's morning time? It's different things. So it's... Um, it's That's circadian rhythm. Rhythm. Circadian yeah. rhythm, yeah. Whereas if you're looking at a backlit device, so mm-hmm. like, you know, an iPad, iPhone, laptop, yeah. sometimes even the TV, whatever it may be, it is starting to stimulate the brain rather than the brain starting to wind down, prepare itself for bed. Right. It's starting to ramp it back up again. Yes. So it's, do the blue light lenses help that? Yeah, I guess they would to some extent. But the thing is- it's, it's still also, stimulated by the content. <laughs> absolutely. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Mm. You're still- looking at this content, yeah. whether you can acknowledge it in the moment or not, but your body does feel things mm. like when you're seeing all this content, it's like scroll through your Instagram for, for argument's sake. You see someone's pregnancy announcement, you know, you're happy for that. But then, you know, you see something going on across the other side of the world and it's yep. like, you're sad for that. And it's like, oh, so you, I stopped watching the news. you start going through all these different emotions where yes. like you feel things and, and that's a lot like, that's so if you're an empath. I, I'm very much an empathetic person, so I can't take things on and, yeah. and, ignore them like it's I, I don't have that protective bubble I like absorb it all yeah yeah but when it does come to managing burnout it's it definitely is a multi-modality approach okay and so it's like when I have a client sitting with me and we're talking through things we're not just addressing diet diet is absolutely where we start but it's like you also need to be looking into what's going on in your lifestyle what modifications can we make there as well as what's going on mentally and what sort of right. modifications can we make there do you need to see a therapist what mm. else do you need to be doing to try and help manage this burnout mm. and I don't want to pick on doctors but I do find that if I've ever gone to a naturopath or a nutritionist they are doing a holistic approach and they're, take, they're asking me to take them through my whole day and they, they want to see yeah. the full picture, whereas the doctor, you know, they got a lot more on their plate. Sometimes it's a Band-Aid of here's a tablet, here's, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, well, when you think about it, I think the average doctor consult is like seven minutes long. Yeah. You're going for a, a GP who's only got seven to ten yeah. minutes, whatever it is, and then an naturopath nutritionist. We're like, I've spent an hour and a half. That's right, initial consult's only yeah. an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, Other signs and symptoms to look out for with burnout as well is things like motivation. So are you still motivated? Do you feel depressed? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling withdrawn? What's your natural approach to life? Like are you normally someone who's really happy and bubbly and and quite social and now have you become quite recluse, like where you're just Mm -hmm. wanting to sort of turn into yourself? These are also going to be signs and symptoms Mm -hmm. of if you've been burnt out or not. Yeah, that's really good. And so it might not be a fact that it's a mental health issue or that you have depression. It could just be that you're just burnt out and overworked. You know how I've read this thing once where they're like, I have a tendency to be an all or nothing girl. I'm all in, I'm all energy, or I just back out because I don't feel like the hype girl, you know? And um, that's part of what I'm enjoying about growing older. I'm learning the seasons of life and the seasons of my days where I'm like, it's okay. Like today, I'm lower energy, you know me, I'm normally, and I'm lower energy, but that's okay. I got yeah. a little less sleep last night, Leo needed a little bit more attention. So I had a tendency years ago to just quit things and go, oh, I can't do it, I've taken on too much. And I read this thing online once, it said, sometimes you don't need to quit, you just need to rest. <laughs> like you can yeah. literally just shut your diary up and say, sorry guys, yeah. I'm resting today. One day of rest, you might have a clear head. If I have one day of rest, the next day I am feeling motivated yeah. to do things again. So rest is productive. Rest is productive. And we always thought, there was always an element of guilt with women, like, yeah. I should be doing something. I just, like, I still, it still creeps in. And I'm like, no, yeah. this is productive. This is part of it. And I always say that, like, if you talk to a PT where it comes to training and building muscle, that rest day is actually required because the muscle actually grows on the rest, not in the middle of the workout. So, like, yeah. literally the rest is aiding the workout that you just did. The rest is huge. And it's not just sleep. 
It's like no, um, it's, it's I not. talk about this all the time and I think the episode on ways to fill up your cup but it's, you know, that holistic approach of play, playtime. You know, yeah. like we used to play as kids and we don't now. We're achieving. We're, tick, we're ticking off boxes. Like yeah. every day I've got the diary and I'm trying to tick things off and if I do something that wasn't in the diary, I write it in just so I can tick it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a loser. Yeah, like you just need to play and have things for yourself and I, I tagged myself at the infrared sauna the other day and nearly every woman in my life liked yeah, liked it because I wrote. <laughs> I was one of them. And I was like, doing things for myself makes me a better mom. You're welcome, Leo. Because I'm yeah. like sitting in, and I look how relaxed I look. Sitting in that thing. I love my infrared saunas and you can't do them when you're pregnant. And I either read a book or I play, I always play meditation music. And I come home so refreshed. I have like yeah. a cold shower after it. And then, you know, it's only an hour out of my day. And that makes me a better mom. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. Same as going to the gym. Like it's that one hour yeah. away where it's just you're in the gym and getting a good endorphin here. I don't know if you heard the last episode I did with the midwife. No, you did. You were listening to it where I mentioned that Steph Clay Smith had a day with her baby and yeah. and some like the comment section, I had to sort of stop myself from reading comments on Instagram posts yeah. because people are just, like they said on Seinfeld, I will never understand people. They're the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. they can be wonderful, but sometimes they're awful. But when another woman judges another woman, just fuck off. Like yeah. it is so ridiculous. And she's like, she was in the gym, her partner was away, and she's like, if it's your day with your child, shouldn't you have taken him to the park? Why did you choose to go to the gym? <gasps> like it literally, first of all. It's an hour. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> None of your business. Second of all, it's an hour as if the kid gives a shit. Third yeah. of all, it makes her a better mum to feel mentally Definitely. rested and physically fit. Are Absolutely. you kidding? So yeah. I've never made any apologies for any sort of time I take for myself and it's just um, I am lucky though where Alan runs his own business and he's a bit more flexible with time so I can get him to, like today, take Leo out for a walk. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's tough if you're both working full time. You do need help. It, t- it does take a village, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay, well, what can we do to avoid or manage burnout without being a billionaire who can escape on our private jet to the Maldives? I, I was just <laughs> mentioning, though, when I watched the Lady Gaga documentary and she had fibromyalgia. She's got a team of people massaging her. She's lying on the couch in her beautiful penthouse in New York and she's like, I don't know what I'd fucking do if I didn't have all these people. So, yeah. and I was just saying I used to work with a woman who was getting chemo for breast cancer. We worked at Maya in the city. She was had to stand on her feet and push through it and, like, sometimes – you just still have to push through. And I think women white knuckle it to yeah. get shit done. Yep. You know, what are some little things? Give us some practical tips that women can take away today to think, all right, I might not be able to take four weeks leave to to recoup. Where are the little things I can take back in my schedule to put, fill my cup up? Yeah, so there's a lot. So there's different aspects as well that you can change. So you need to look at diet. Diet yeah. is always being nutritionist is where I start. Okay. My biggest thing though is coffee and coffee intake. Yeah. Coffee, I don't want to say it's the devil because it definitely does have its benefits. You know, it's an antioxidant and I think it depends nice on the person or whatever Latoya. else. I, as you know, I'll have a sip of Alan's coffee and have an anxiety attack. My palms sweat, my pulse juds out of my neck. I cannot have caffeine at all like it comes down to the way you metabolize it yeah I don't know what the hell happened because I used to be out going to raves all the time and knocking back red bulls so I don't know what happened (laughs) with what you just said there is so much to unpack there because Mm. so many women are doing it like how often you know do you wake up of a morning and the kids are up basically the same time you're up and it's like oh god like I haven't even had time to have breakfast or have a shower or anything it's the worst thing when they don't give you a half an hour in the morning that's right and Mm. so it's like what do you turn to what's something quick and easy it's like coffee and usually it's the people who wake up craving coffee are the people who need to quit coffee Ah, or reduce the coffee. Mm. So if you wake up and you're someone who's craving coffee and the first thing you have is it on an empty stomach is a coffee? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, that coffee has got to change. Well, I had a mum and caught up for a walk, and she's like, "I don't eat breakfast some days till 10 a.m. if at all, because I and I know what this is like because I wake up and Leo has to eat straight away, so I get it. So I'll have a juice ready and I'll sip on that while I'm feeding him, and then I'll do it. But she's breastfeeding and it's taking hours. Well, firstly, I said, get your husband to make your breakfast. But second of all, I said, can you prepare it the night before and have overnight oats or a smoothie yeah. ready to go? So you grab it, sit down to feed him and just have something. You can like eat in between feeds with one hand. Would you recommend maybe preparing something the night before? Yeah, absolutely. But what I want to say with the whole coffee thing is, look, some people, especially women, mm. are very emotionally attached to coffee. <laughs> and I mean, I see the look on clients' faces when I start talking and asking about coffee oh, I can see the bitch, fear don't in their you eyes. coffee from me that's right because it's like they are like we're so dependent on it but not only that like uh, I love coffee I love the taste of coffee it's everyone needs a vice you've got to have something that you look and forward it's, to it's you got some kind of pleasure so mm. 
what I suggest to do with coffee is never, ever have it on an empty stomach. Yeah. Always, always, always have food first. Yes. So you should be waking up. And the first two things you should do is firstly drink water. Yes. You wake up so dehydrated. Dehydration makes you feel fatigued. Mm. Wake up, have water. Secondly, go into your breakfast, have a good breakfast, a high protein, high fat, some kind of fiber in there as well mm-hmm. to get you going. Yeah. And then switch your coffee to either and after protein. Breakfast. You said protein, right? Yes. So protein, fiber, and, and high fats. fat as well. Yeah. Okay. So it could be healthy fats like peanut butter or nuts. Yeah. Well. Avocado, avocado, eggs. Yeah. If you have your coffee after breakfast or for me personally, I prefer to have it mid-morning. Yep. It's not going to give you that overwhelmed feeling. Yeah. So, you know, you have your that coffee. ready for it. You've laid down the foundations for breakfast. That's right. Like once you have your coffee on an empty stomach, your stress and cortisol levels are at their peak. But and I think that's also bad for your bowel, isn't it, for your gut health, like it's dehydrated? Like um, I Different find people, that, different things. I find that bowel movements are better if you have water and then I have a veggie juice and then, you know, take my time with breakfast and that's yeah. always the best for me. For... Some people it's like it has the opposite effect where it's oh, going yeah. to go straight yeah. through them. Oh, Alan's um, out yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah. Coffee's so, kicked in. Get out yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> different people, different things. But mm. firstly, like we've got something called our cortisol awakening response. Okay. And what that is, is cortisol has this natural ebb and flow throughout the day where, you know, it starts to slowly rise up a morning. That's what's getting you up of a morning, waking you up, making you feel refreshed. When's it highest? I heard around 7 a.m. or is it different for everyone? No. So it's highest, I'd say, during the day. So kind of like okay. around midday is when it's at its peak. Okay. Then by about 3 p.m. is when it starts to calm down and taper off. Are and we, so are we all feel... A bit crap there. Everyone's either reaching for coffee or the chocolate out of the cupboard. That's right. So. <laughs> and so this whole like 3 p.m. slump mm. is a thing. Yeah. Like it's your cortisol levels are dropping, but your blood sugar levels are also dropping. Okay. And it's like the bigger gap between your cortisol levels and your blood sugar levels, the more crap you feel, the more tired you feel. Yeah. So you want to close that gap and, and and have a stable gap. Listen, this is why Italians are having a siesta at that time. <laughs> Absolutely. I love an afternoon snooze. That's when when you need it. When you need it, yeah. yeah. I find um, anything later than three though, and then it, we're approaching dinner time. That's sure. right. And so... <laughs> And then from 3 p.m. onwards, it's continually to taper off and okay. it, cortisol should be at its lowest at around 10 p.m. And that's what's pushing you into bed and that's when you should be in bed asleep. So, yeah, so we've got the cortisol awakening response and coffee plays into that. Yeah. So if you're having coffee on an empty stomach, that cortisol level's peaking first mm. thing in the morning, then it's coming crashing down. And so by 10 a.m., you're already like, oh, God, I need a second coffee because your cortisol's already crashed. Mm. And so you're having a second one and it's spiking again and we're going in this up and down, up and down phase. Yeah. Eat breakfast, have water push the coffee back to after breakfast yeah, and that like cortisol that. spike won't spike as I high. don't find it makes me feel energized. I find it makes me feel wired and yeah. then I crash. So I'm actually better with like a Barocca or something. I find that yeah. actually more slow releasing. No, that's really good. Coffee is definitely one of them. And um, the second thing is as well is looking into your diet. So you want to be making sure that you're having some form of protein present at every meal and snack. Great. Now, it doesn't always have to obviously be, you know, a piece of steak or a piece of chicken. It can be things like, you know, your nuts and your seeds, mm. you know, your, your yogurts and, and those sorts of things. What it's going to do for you is it's going to stabilize, firstly, blood sugar levels, but it's also going to stabilize cortisol levels, yeah. which are the two things that's playing into this whole fatigue burnout thing. Yeah. So you want to be doing that. You want to be having things like your complex carbohydrates. So things like your sweet potatoes, your quinoas, basmati rices, mm. low GI things, because Again, if you were to have something more simplified, say like, you know, white bread, white white bread or your sugars and your mm. cakes and that sort of thing, it, it's spiking blood sugar levels. Yeah. Which is like putting you into this roller coaster. Where do you sit? Just I'll pause you briefly on carbohydrates at nighttime. So I've always had a theory for me, for me, it works like I don't need a high amount of or low GI carbs at night like pasta because I feel like it's meant for energy and I'm going to go to sleep. So the max I'll do is a bit of sweet potato with dinner and then I'll have a protein and some green veggie. Your body still needs energy to sleep. This is carbs at night is like the biggest misconception. Everyone's mixed. That's right. And so many times, and I think this is fitness industry related as well. So many times you meet people and it's like, oh, I can't have carbs after six. Yeah. And it's like, well, why? Yeah. Like your body still needs energy. Okay. So yeah, I, I always have Carbs at night, always. Do you have less though than you would at breakfast no. and lunch? No. So you're <laughs> like I know Maddie has a big bowl of pasta all the time, but that girl's working out hard twenty four seven, so she is burning it off. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Like no, I never have, but I also feel that I don't digest it as well. I find that I eat lighter at dinner, to be honest. Yeah. I, like I like a big lunch and yeah. I just find You also need to be taking into consideration what time you're going to bed. So you obviously mm. I'm not obviously eating this huge meal at, say, 9 o'clock, then getting into bed at 9.30. Listen, I am such a nana. 
I have dinner at 5 p.m. Yes, so do I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I like 5, 5.30. And then you go to US or Europe and they're like, not even open. Yeah. So 8 p.m. and I'm like, we're going to have to have a pre-dinner snack because I can't yeah. It's too long. late. It's way too late. Too late. But then they're also staying up later and they sleep in. So it's a whole schedule thing. Yeah. So protein is another big thing. You okay. want to be taking out any kind of like stimulants. So alcohol. If you're burnt out and fatigued, alcohol's got to go. Yeah, and I find that people are pumping themselves up in the morning with coffee and winding themselves down at night with wine. Absolutely. And it's fine, but if you're using it, if you're using it as a like a source of something, I think that's a problem. It should be like let's enjoy wine with dinner, not I need this to wind down. Yeah. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like on the odd occasion, fine, but if, if you're using it as a tool to wind down, as a then tool, you, you've it should got to be something, something to enjoy. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Removing things like alcohol, removing things like sugar, anything that can kind of hype you up because it's, it's going to cause that dysregulation in the body. And this should help get a better sleep, right? Because I hear that alcohol is not great before bed to get a good sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. I know I always feel like the buildings are spinning if I've had too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you want to move into things like lifestyle changes. So mm-hmm. what you can be doing there. So for example, sleep is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Addressing sleep, sleep quality, how long you're in bed for. Um, I always like to advise you want to try and sleep between 10 and 6 because that's in line with the natural circadian rhythm. Yeah. Um, but that's actually a sleep at 10, not getting into bed at 10. And that's where I've always done myself a disservice. So now I sort of try and aim for 9 o'clock leave yep. the living room, start my wine. Because my wind down routine can take up to two hours. Like it's yeah, full wow. on, you know, I go and do the dry brushing and then I'll have a shower and then you might, you know, yep. squeeze some pores in the mirror and then you might. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's full on. It's full on. And then I do all the moisturising when I, you know, and then yeah. I want to read. And before you know it, it's 11 p.m. So I, I do try and leave the living room at 9 p.m. Otherwise I'm shooting yeah. myself in the foot. Yeah, great idea. But, yeah, and also having some kind of sleep hygiene. So, you know, getting off backlit devices an hour or two before bed, doing what you said where you kind of got some kind of routine or ritual before getting into bed. So it could yeah. be like showering, skincare routine, something where it's signaling to your brain and your body, okay, it's wind down time. We're okay. going to get into bed. We're going to relax. Mm. Okay, um, that's good. Then doing things like exercise. I know it sounds a little bit contradictive because when you're burnt out and fatigued is the last thing you want to do. But having like gentle forms of exercise um, and getting that endorphin hit in. No, it's good because beneficial. the fatigue is probably more mental fatigue. Yeah. You know, like if you've had a really like full on day on the laptop, I remember back to my retail days, I'm like, this feels more tiring than when I would stand on my feet all day in retail. Like sometimes mm. the, the physical is less exhausting than the mental fatigue. Do you find agree. that? Agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. It makes me more agitated. You know, like Definitely. When you sit in an aeroplane for 24 hours, like you feel agitated because yeah. you haven't moved enough. Yeah. Yeah. But then, the, you know, you're getting things like decision fatigue where it's like, I can't even think about what to make for dinner because I'm so mentally fatigued. Mm. So you want to look into your lifestyle factors as well. Also looking at what can you start to delegate? So if you're someone who's got a completely full schedule, back-to-back meetings, whatever it may be, what can you start passing off to other people? Or what can you streamline? What can you automate? Honestly, Latoria, I think you've hit the nail on the head as to why it's mainly women. Because we don't like to delegate because no one does it as well as we do it. <laughs> Every time you delegate to someone, it's half assed And you just yeah. like, forget it. You know, like that thing that's always on Instagram where it's like, me, no one around here helps, also me. No, not like that. That's yeah. not how you do it. You know, like, <laughs> And I remember the midwife saying in the parenting class, look, your husbands are not going to put the dishes away the way you like it, but let them. Yeah. Let them accept help and delegate. And when you're in business, the number one thing that business coaches will say will be delegate where you can. You, That's right. You don't have a clue about social media. Just hire someone to do it. It's taking away your time That's where right. you could be getting more sales. So I think it's the same in life. Like it is. Put into the things that are important and where can you delegate and do it without guilt, you know, like yep. I'll not give something to Alan because I'm like, oh, he's busy and I'm like, I'm busy too. Why do I feel? It's like a patriarchal thing where I feel like oh, I should be doing it. I should be taking on more. I don't have to. Yeah. He's not complaining if I ask him to do stuff to help out. He just doesn't see it like I see it. So yeah. he would actually rather take direction. <laughs> yeah. Well, women are more prone to be hypervigilant as well where yeah. you're constantly assessing and looking around what needs to be done and you're searching yeah. for, you know, whatever. But, yeah, so delegation is a big thing but – also like the whole automating and streamlining. Like I think that's probably one of my favorite things. Mm. So for example, you know, what can you streamline in your life? Is it what's weighing you down? Is it paying a bill? Is it that mental load of thinking about the bill or paying the bill? Can you set up a bills account where you're transferring money into that bills account each week and it's all automated, direct debited, mm. out of sight, out of mind, you know it's getting paid. Yeah, great suggestion. Um, you don't have to think about it. It's things like investing in stuff like a robot vacuum cleaner. 
I cannot tell you how That's much funny. that changed my life. It's funny you say that because I was going to say the dishwasher changed my life. Yeah. Like that, having that hour back, I was a very slow dishwasher and I have yeah. people in my life and there'll be people who'll be like, well, I can't afford that. That's fine. But there's people I know who work, both partners work very long hours and they hire cleaners. Yeah. I don't think that's being wasteful. I think that's being smart. It's being like, resourceful. It's being resourceful yeah. because I think the most valuable thing is time over money. So, it, it, yeah. you know, I'll spend money on something that is of value to me. So if that's – and one day I would love to get a cleaner. Alan owns a cleaning company. Like just hire yeah. someone. No, I just think it's smart. Yeah, Getting time it back is. to what you want to put it into. Yeah, And that is one of the other things. Like <clears throat> if you can afford to, yes, it's absolutely a luxury. Can you invest in a house cleaner? Even if it's just doing the main areas, you know, bathroom, lounge room, kitchen. Yeah. And I think people will be surprised what they can afford because – you just think, oh, I can't afford that. It seems like something extra. But when you sit down and look, every time I sit down and look at my budget, I can always find a way to afford something that I need, things that I put off. There's always yeah. something I can move around or delay or get rid of or definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, things like house cleaner, like you said, dishwasher, mm. looking at who can help you. So, for example, do you and one of your kids, friends, parents or whatever live in the same neighbourhood? Can you alternate between spot drop-offs? That's a great idea. Yeah. Like, but that's a great idea and this is what people used to do and this is why they were always saying it takes a village. Like it's really good to reach out and have people help out. And it is, like I definitely. was saying, I had a friend babysit and I'm like, hey, next time you need to go out, I'll look after your boy. Like it's yeah. it's a you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And people love to feel needed and that they're helping you as well. Absolutely. Um, another thing as well is scheduling. So how can you use your schedule to give you back more time. So yeah. if you think about everything that you need to do for the week, mm. taking into consideration things like washing the towels, grocery shopping, meal prep, cooking, whatever your schedule is, as well as, you know, all your meetings, your lunch breaks, gym times, whatever, schedule out as much as you physically can mm. during the week, or sorry, at the beginning of the week, for the week, and then you can start to see where you have free time. I do that. And it, honestly, I do it before bed, which might sound weird, but it helps me sleep better knowing I'm planned yeah. for the next day or for the week. Yeah. I love sitting down with a pen and paper and I have a, a sheet. I'm so old school. I know everyone has an Excel spreadsheet, but I have a pen and paper and I draw the thing into like across and do four things of my next four pays. This is what I'm budgeting. And then in my diary, I'll budget, like I'll, I will schedule the whole week yeah. and I feel better knowing where I have spaces. So if someone asks me to do something, I'm like, I have a gap there. I can't do it that day. It just makes me feel yeah. mentally freer and then I have a good sleep. Absolutely. Like it's, for me, that's made a huge difference as yeah. well. Like I'm juggling so many hats the one time and yes. it's like I work in blocks. And so it's like, okay, this trial block is dedicated to these, this trial block is dedicated to that. Yeah. And then it's like. We are yeah. wearing a lot of hats as well. We are. Mm. We are. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. And also outsourcing where you can and if possible, but also seeing like, can you start implementing things where perhaps you cook dinner tonight, your neighbor cooks dinner tomorrow night and you guys share, like, not everyone's going to have that relationship with yeah, people yeah. around them, but it's yeah. just a suggestion. Where can your kids help out? Yeah. If you've got older kids, can they start taking on some of the chores at home? I cannot wait to start <laughs> delegating to Leo. I cannot come quick enough. I read a study, though, saying that it can make them um, more successful, more independent, yeah. starting chores from a younger age. It actually makes them feel important and valued. So great. Go well, collect win, that win. laundry, <laughs> As soon as you're walking, buddy, I'm piling a whole pile of laundry in your arms as soon as you start talking. <laughs> That's not a sweatshop, but I do want him to have those skills. Yeah, definitely. One of my other biggest things that has changed a lot for me Mm -hmm. is I've ditched morning tasks. So for me, it was causing a lot of overwhelm. So I'd wake up in the morning. I need to put a load of washing on. I need to hang that load of washing out. I need to unpack the dishwasher. I need to pack my daughter's lunch. I need to get myself ready, my kids ready. And it's like bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And it's like, by the time you got in the car and you're heading off for the day, it's like, I'm already bloody tired. Like yes. I've just, yeah. I've done so much already. And the stress and yeah. overwhelm of trying to get everything done is what kills me. Yeah. Then like, you know, that stress and overwhelm is then filtering down to my kids and everyone's yes. just had this chaotic morning. Oh, that's, it's funny you say that it's chaotic, chaotic energy. And I did say this to someone when I'm rushed, I rush feed Leo and he cries through the feed and I'm like, oh, he's totally picking up on my rushed energy because I'm yeah. not sitting and smiling at him. Yeah, definitely. It's a thing. And then, you know, then we're teaching our kids stories like that and so on and so forth. And mm. so what I've done is morning tasks stop and they've all Good now become night tasks. Good for you. And so it's like of an evening, it's as soon as dinner's finished, everything's in the dishwasher, dishwasher is on. By the mm. time the kids are bathed, put in bed and whatever, the dishwasher's basically finished, I can unpack it. Mm. The washing machine goes on. Once that finishes, I hang my clothes at night. 
that on their overnight. That's good, but I think that that works for you. There's absolutely no way I could do that. So I think everyone needs to find their schedule that works for them. So the reason I do it in the morning, I love doing tasks in the morning. I have heaps of energy. I put vlogs on and they're doing little tasks and it's like I'm doing a task with a bunny. I love doing it in the morning. And then because at night I have zero energy and I have this thing where if I have tasks left on my schedule for that day, and if I'm sitting and watching like my favorite show with Alan, I don't enjoy the show because all I'm thinking is what needs to be done and I feel guilty. Once I've had a really productive day, I love cuddling in with Alan on the couch and watching a movie or something because I yeah. feel rested. So for me that works. I just have no energy to do physical tasks at night. I couldn't. Yeah. I well, see, by 8 o'clock everything's done. Yeah. And so then it's like then it, it physically is just our time together. But, again, it's going to come down oh, to what your schedule like. like yeah, and, got you. And, yeah. and how you're running things. Like between the hours of 5 and 8, like it's like – it's peak hour in our house, you know. Mm. It's dinner's on the table. Everything's sort of starting to get done for the day, and yeah. then it just means in the morning I focus on myself. I focus on my kids, and that's no great. Stress. And then you can do your journaling and meditating yeah. in the morning. <laughs> no, that's nice. Yeah, you pick pick what works for you. That's for sure. So some other things you want to might look into as well from a diet perspective is nutrients. Mm-hmm. So stuff like magnesium, for example is great for nervous system calming you down Mm -hmm. um, but also increasing sleep quality yes which is such an important thing and also too most people are deficient in magnesium i can't live without magnesium yeah (laughs) i can't it's it's the one supplement that i'm always like that and a probiotic no yeah go a day without (laughs) um so yeah something like that is important but if someone's struggling with burnout and fatigue and they are constantly stressed stuff like zinc and vitamin c as well as as well is also going to be assisting them right um so looking into like using rich foods um but again if you're wanting to look into supplementation and perhaps chat with a healthcare practitioner to see what's suitable yeah and it's different for your stage of life right because postpartum there's actually extra sort of nutrients and things that i would need right definitely Yeah. yeah So talk to a professional and, and talk to professional as you always it. say, get um, tested and get blood tests to see what you're deficient in. There's not a one exactly. size fits all yeah. when it comes to that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But then if if you are experiencing extreme fatigue and you are constantly burnt out and you are constantly getting sick, mm-hmm. always get a blood test done mm. because you'll be surprised at how a lot deficient of time it's iron. iron. That's so right. Many women, you know, like if we're bleeding every month, so many women I know that are deficient in yeah. iron. I, I get to the point where I'm walking into walls and I – I've had in the past, like now I take the liquid supplements and they, they work good, but in the past supplements weren't working on me, nor was food because I had gut health issues and it's like I wasn't absorbing things properly through the gut. So for me the infusions worked because it was direct yep. to vein. And, oh, my God, I felt so good after those. <laughs> but I've been better in recent years. I think my gut health's improved. So, But, yeah, no, it definitely is. So things like iron, vitamin D, um, even checking thyroid health. We're as all well. liking vitamin D, right? Like everyone. Most people do, yeah. Iron and vitamin D are, t- are the two biggest yeah. nutrient deficiencies, yeah. particularly vitamin D in winter. The other nutrient would be vitamin B as well. B. Yes. So B is also great for energy and if you're deficient in something but like what B12. B? There's B12s, there's B6s. How do you – So, oh, again, chat, would cover yeah, yeah. Chat, chat with the professional about what B you may need. Um, okay. But generally B vitamins – they all help with energy metabolism in one way or another. Okay, awesome tips there. How long can burnout last and how long would it take to recover if we're doing all the right things that you've just discussed? This is going to depend on how severe your burnout is. Yeah, of course. And how long you've been burnt out for and how well you can actually implement all of these strategies. Okay. One thing that we should have probably touched on for a strategy is also boundary management. Oh, and 100%. You know, and I did just say to you, every single episode comes back to boundaries. And yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to be a bitch by saying use the word no to people, but it is so important with your mental health, with your physical health, with your, your spiritual health, like everything yeah. comes back to boundaries. And as I said, no one else knows what's on your schedule other than you. So it's up That's to right. you to, you know, and to do without guilt, like, um, you know, that phrase of no is a complete sentence. And yeah. Alan will just say no to things without explanation. And I have so many women in my life that will put it in a text, I can't do it because i got to do this and I'm so yeah. sorry. You can just say, I'm sorry, I can't enjoy. Have a great day. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then, do you know what? It took me a long time to figure that out because Ages. I'm definitely an over-explainer. Like, yes. Oh, I yes. can't make it because X, Y, Z. Oh, I would say in my 40s is when it hit all my yeah. like 30s, yeah. you got a while to go. While to go. <laughs> you can well, do it starting to get go. better with it now that it's yeah. like, no, sorry, I can't enjoy. Boundaries is actually the hardest thing I find clients struggle with to implement, myself included, because it's – the biggest change and it's mm. uncomfortable at first as well. It is uncomfortable. Um, and so, yeah, it's in terms of recovery, how long does it take? That's on you. It depends how well we can implement things. I'm going to touch on this boundary thing and this is a personal belief of mine. There is a lot of text out there that from years ago where they're saying what, a, what an idea of 
a good woman in the patriarchal society of the 50s, a good woman, it, it's like it's her job to placate the man and make him feel good. And all, she always has a smile on her face and she always, you know, gives you a warm welcome. There's something about most people pleasers in my life are women. Yeah. And I think there's something that we were brought up in a patriarchal society where you're meant to make people feel good about themselves. You know, men yeah. weren't taught to make people feel good. They were taught to go after things. You know, like if women speak up, they're being bossy. If a man does it, they're being assertive. There's, yeah. there's a lot of differences with men and women that we're sort of, you know, being taught to make people feel good. So I personally think that women, because of this reason, we feel guilt when we let people down. Like it's our job is, you know, the matriarch especially to always be there for people. Yeah. You don't have to anymore. You can't, you know, like um, I was just saying the PT was saying she was on the holiday and she's like, it sounds selfish, doesn't it? I said, no, it doesn't. It sounds fucking great. Like yeah. that you enjoyed not checking in with people for four weeks. Yeah. That's not selfish. That is awesome. No. Yeah. So right. I really think there is something there with women. So I think we have to allow ourselves that time this is what this whole podcast is about it's filling up your cup and filling up your cup every area of your life requires those boundaries yeah you need to be able to push back you cannot do everything all at once we're we're, we're literally pouring from an empty cup all the time yeah that's yep. right that's right which is why we're all burnt out that's it yeah so why didn't we do this episode earlier this should <laughs> be my first episode <laughs> why did we this was your idea this episode how did i not have this on my list insane it's going to come down to you and and what you're able to implement. Yeah. Um, but then also how fried your system is. Absolutely. Can yeah. take years. Like I said, days. I think we've all been white knuckling it for so long. So yeah. So basically the answer is listen to this episode, take all Latoya's tips and implement them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Maybe get someone in your life to hold you accountable and make sure you're doing it. Well, they were great tips, really helpful. I appreciate your insight today. And if anyone wants to reach out to Latoya, I've linked all her links in the show notes as always. So Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I know how Thank valuable you. it is and f- for not pushing back on today as a, as a boundary. <laughs> um, I, as you know, I like to end every episode with asking what's something you're going to do to fill up your cup in the next week. Since I've gone back to training since having Isabella, my biggest thing has been wanting to do a reform of Pilates class. <gasps> I haven't done it yet. And so this week, that is my goal. Just Dude, to do one. We're so on <laughs> path and in sync. Went to the gym on Sunday. I train at Fitness First at Cronulla. They're bringing in reformer Pilates. I don't oh, have to spend yeah. an extra fee because there's an, a really good one up the street, but I would have to have two memberships. Yeah. They're bringing it in as part of my membership. Wow. I am so pumped. All they need now is an infrared sauna and I'm never leaving that done. gym ever. <laughs> I am so happy. that I, I think the last time I did it – oh, no, I did it before I fell pregnant, but I remember before my wedding I was doing – like one day in the gym, one day reformer Pilates, I felt yeah. so lean. Like it was yeah. such a great workout. And I, yeah. a lot of – I used to be a dancer and all, a lot of my friends are ex-dancers. And I find they all love reformer Pilates because there's something sort of balletic about it as yeah. well. But it is such a great workout and sort of like minimal on your joints rather than like Definitely. burpees. And, oh, yeah. I'll go do it. I'm going to check in with you in a yeah, week to make sure me. you've done it. So <laughs> – it can be really hard. It, it so is. So prep yourself. Go easy. It's actually like it looks flowy. Yeah. It's actually really it's hard. Really and hard. I lift and it heavy weights. Burns. Yeah. I, I think it's the it repetition burn. too. But oh my God, it's so much fun. Oh, I'm so happy for you. It's exciting. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening. And please do something in the next week to fill up your cup. There is no resource more valuable than time. And I thank you for spending your time with us today. Your voice is so important and we would love to hear which topics you would like discussed in future episodes. Please reach out via Instagram at Can I Get a Refill Podcast or on our private Facebook group to let us know. If you enjoyed this or previous episodes, we would be so grateful if you could please subscribe, rate and review to help our voices continue to be heard. Catch you in the next episode.